Welcome to Data Drivers. I'm your host, Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon. In this series, we explore essential strategies for retailers to harness the power of data and analytics. We'll guide you through the tools and techniques that enable a deep understanding of your customers' preferences and behaviors. We'll learn how to optimize everything from the backend operations to logistics and supply chain management, maximizing efficiency and enhancing customer satisfaction. This episode is all about the importance of customer lifetime value. This includes not only how retailers calculate customer lifetime value or CLV, but also how they segment customers based on value and use insights to prioritize marketing efforts and those ever important retention strategies. Now, before we get started, don't forget to check the description below for information and news about what's coming up from the Retail Cloud Alliance. Now, let's dive into some customer lifetime value. When we think about creating stickiness with a brand, it is that ability to anticipate customers' needs. It is that ability to ensure that they understand what you are offering them. From that, we know that it has to have a presence online. We know that 80 to 87% of customers are starting their purchase decisions online. When you're able to present to the customer those high quality data around products, that's highly personalized or hyper-personalized to them. We know that you begin to create brand stickiness. And we know that retailers who do that well are those that are going to win in this experiential economy. Number one, the, the biggest factor in increased CAC is the cost of paid media. You know, if we go back 10 years ago to the dawn of the direct-to-consumer age, those companies really relied on pennies on the dollar digital advertising as well as content-driven marketing to drive traffic and conversion. So whether it was Warby Parker or uh, Harry's Razors, right? But then media started to get really expensive. And then during COVID, it got even more expensive. And after COVID, it got even more expensive. And now today, paid media is more expensive and more complex than it's ever been. One of the reasons is that uh, the competition has gone up. And if you look at uh, e-commerce specifically, the advertising spend has gone up because you have to compete with other digital channels, which are either purely digital channels or combination of that. Even the regular traditional retail, if you see, there used to be a lower customer acquisition cost, but that's also going up because attracting new footfalls needs a little bit more campaigns, a little bit more advertising, a little bit more marketing spend. So I think there is a lot of shift which is happening between the physical and digital channels kind of merging or overlapping and the lower cost on the physical channels is also going up and the uh, uh, online channels it's increasing every day because of the fact that there is there are more purely online retail startups who are competing with the traditional players I think when you're managing customer acquisition costs, one of the very relevant challenges right now is around attribution difficulty and trying to understand what specific marketing channel or event has driven a customer to your site or to your store and actually entice them to check out, right? With so many different customer touch points, both in-store, online, across social media, across other selling channels, it's very hard to determine what's working and what's not working and how to attribute from a marketing perspective, a sale to a particular event. I think secondarily, we still live in 2024 in a world where not every retailer has a 360 degree view of their customer. There's still quite a bit of fragmented data that exists across many different systems. You know, a customer's data lives sometimes in a sales system, which is different than the customer data lives in a marketing system, which is different than the customer data that lives in a loyalty system versus the e-commerce site, et cetera. There are still many retailers that haven't found a great way of being able to aggregate that data together. Predictive analytics tools are continuously increasing in maturity and data-driven organizations are leveraging those tools and driving trust into the data that they have, as well as acquiring high value trusted data. That data is then leveraged across the entire retail value chain. 
and drives decisions around assortment, around positioning of that assortment. By that I mean in stores and online and where exactly should it be present, in how I order and from whom I order and at what price. And the more efficient I become at that, the better the customer experience. Customers expect us as retailers to have and provide the best experience for them, to anticipate their needs and be ready to offer that product to them at almost before they even know that they need it, if you will. I think at the top of the list for me is personalization, right? The data is insight and insight fuels communication on our Rethink Retail Mixer today. We were in a unified commerce group and, and one of the gentlemen had talked about the most important thing is having a conversation, flooding people's emails and abusing the privilege that they've given you to open a channel of communication with them is, is a huge problem in terms of CAC and in terms of, you know, creating a more unified commerce system. Unifying your data and using it wisely and in a targeted way is one way to enhance efficiency. Data has become currency today. You know, you probably are aware that uh, most retailers are now monetizing their digital channels because they have a captive data with them, uh, which is what they call retail media networks. They are attracting suppliers to put an ad at the point of sale or at the checkout, whether online or even in stores, to really monetize the investments they had with the uh, digital channels. To effectively use that data to not just monetize, but also create decisions to identify target audience, to identify campaigns, to make sure their campaign has a better sales uplift because ultimately that informs and affects your customer acquisition cost. There's two parts to this, right? Part of it is collecting the data. The other part is reacting to the data, right? So a lot of technologies are out there today that allow retailers to be able to aggregate their customer data together to create customer journey maps across all their different touch points. And you can overlay on top of that things like predictive analysis and AI to be able to predict customer behavior and identify high value customer segments. Once you can do that, then there's tons of things that you can implement after that. Right? You can look at things like marketing automation so that you can have the right ad targeting, so you can run personalized email campaigns and make sure the right message is getting to the right customer at the right time. There are platforms out there that allow you to be able to do very targeted A-B testing across your site and across other platforms that your shoppers may use like apps to experiment with the website elements and the marketing messages to figure out what's working and allows you to create more of a flywheel effect around implementing changes, understanding the impact of the customer, and then monitoring specifically how this is helping you improve your customer attachment rates and improve and lower your cost of customer acquisition. The most practical advice I have for lowering CAC. It starts with understanding that there are channels and tools and technologies out there that will make your retail operation or your brand less reliant on expensive and inflated paid media. And that actually create those things that we were talking about, personalization, listening. And so, you know, how do we use more immersive technology, more immersive and entertaining experiential retail? How do we use those things to say, okay, if I do two live streams a month, I could potentially cut my CAC by 15% in a year, right? And so I think it's really looking at the people, the processes and the technologies that are available today so that you're not over leveraged on one or two models or, or spends on getting traffic and conversions. And then it, uh, it comes back to data also. I mean, retailers have to make that investment in data infrastructure, uh, just making sure you have the right tools and technologies to collect, store, analyze data effectively. Data is the new oil, right? As, as, as we've been saying for years, but it's gotta be good oil. You know, bad data produces bad results. It's one thing to say we will drive a data-driven uh, enterprise. It's much uh, uh, complex than that. 
i suggest to my customers you got to drive the culture foster data driven culture within the enterprise nobody has a monopoly on what may work today because they have a experience of 10 years or 20 years of doing it the world is changing very fast today what customers like in one week's time that trend may go out you know we have social media influence there are social media personalities if they put one tweet or one insta post the entire clothing line will go out of uh, fashion nobody will buy it so you cannot depend on the traditional experience driven decision making you have to foster the data driven culture within the organization well that wraps another episode of data drivers and i certainly hope you got a lifetime's worth of value from this episode in our next episode as part of our modern retail experience we'll be looking at how to automate pricing with the internet of things or iot devices to learn more about the retail cloud alliance don't forget to click the link below and subscribe to our channel so that you are first in line to watch the latest episodes I'm your host Andrew Smith of Think Uncommon and we'll see you next time for more data drivers.